Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Talent Finders would like to welcome Luxury Real Estate Advisor, Mark Hernandez. So welcome, Mark. Hello, Karen. How are you? Good in yourself. I'm doing amazing. Amazing. I'm having a great time. So I want to start off by obviously congratulating you on all your achievements. So can you share with us how your career started in the real estate business and why you chose real estate? Sure. So I, I was studying at the University of Southern California, and I had taken a couple of real estate courses and decided to get my license upon graduation. Uh, at that time, I ended up becoming a commercial real estate broker. So I represented high-rise office building owners and uh, shopping center developers and all of that. And, you know, that eventually uh, got me into South Coast Plaza, which is a, the largest retail center in the Western region of the U.S. Um, and learned a lot about uh, retail real estate and retail real estate management. Um, and then at that time, I decided that I wanted to go to Hollywood. I, I wanted to get into the entertainment business. I wanted to be like a, you know, a big talent agent representing writers, actors, producers, directors. And so I left a six figure career in wow. commercial real estate. And I started in the mail room uh, at United Talent Agency, one of the top agencies in the world, making yeah. $350 per week. And wow. it was a big, big jump down the ladder. Uh, but it, in hindsight, it was something that I, I really enjoyed doing. I'm glad I did it. It was a big risk, but I, I knew that I could climb back up the ladder. Um, yes. And so after UTA, I became a literary manager and I represented screenwriters and directors for film and TV. And wow. at that point, I think I, you know, I think my first year in the business, I did okay. My second year business, I started to get some traction. And then the third year when I was really expecting to break through there was a writer strike oh wow and that wow. caused my business to implode and at that time i decided that uh you know i might want to look at uh, look into other opportunities um and at that time fox an opportunity for fox television and american idol came up and it was the job of all jobs national oh, sales, i'm sure yeah national sales director leading a team of 13 account executives traveling all over the country, pitching to Fortune 1000 brands uh, with regard to campaigns and sponsorships on, on the network. And it was absolutely fabulous. I, I loved working for Fox. I loved my boss. I loved my team. Um, I loved the travel and meeting with people. And I did that for about seven years. Right. Uh, at that time, American Idol was in its 14th season and ratings were starting to soften a little bit. And the, yes. the network decided that the, that would be a good time to do a reorganization. They took about 25% of the workforce. They gave us severance packages. It was bittersweet, but uh, you know they took very good care of all of us. And at that time I said, okay, I'm, I'm done working for the man. I'm gonna work for this man and uh, became an entrepreneur. Amazing, wow. That's such a great journey. So you ranked in the 1.5 of real estate agents in the U.S., which is an incredible achievement. So can you share with us um, how you achieved this, especially um, in such a highly competitive industry and having highly accomplished clients in multiple top end industries? Can you share with us what that process was for you um, to get to work with such high profile and high level clients? Well, first of all, I think I think it all starts with kind of, you know, the, the fire in the belly, I guess, uh, is a big part of it. You know, my parents gave me a very strong work ethic. Yes. Um, my dad was an entrepreneur and he worked his butt off all his life. Uh, my mom was, you know, took part time jobs and whatnot, was, but was mostly there at home uh, with us kids. Uh, but she taught me how to be persistent and how to nicely not take no for an answer. Yes. <laughs> um, so that, that definitely helped. Um, and then I've always been ambition. I've always had the ambition just to do big things. I always wanted to, once I got to this level at where I was, I wanted to get to the next level. So I'm always, always been an upward, had an upward trajectory. Yes. And then lastly, I, I believe that, um, I just think that I, I always try to work harder than the, the rest. 
Yes. You know, when I was in school, I did that. I can remember in college, just working, 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 studying, 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 knowing that I may not have been the brightest, but I would work harder. Yes. And, uh, and work I ethic that, is seriously lacking in this day and age. So it's really great when you get to work with, you know, high level and hardworking individuals. Exactly. Exactly. And I see a lot of people that don't have that. And I'm not yes. criticizing, but, you know, uh, but I also admire th those that I do see that do have that. Yeah. Um, and then I think that it also helped. I think it helped that I came from different businesses before I got into real estate. Yeah, absolutely. When I, when I see people that get into real estate, like right out of school, they can do it. I know they can do it, mm -hmm. but it may take a lot longer because a lot of those, they don't know a lot of people you know, that have the, the assets to buy houses yet. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, here I'd worked at a major talent agency and I worked in, you know, in a major retail center, global destination. I had worked at a, a major television network with, with, with significant, you know, branded shows, uh, working with advertising agents, people in tech. And so I really built, um, a big Rolodex, not to use a bat, not to use Yeah, a, but, but it's true though. Turn. It's, it's about the network but, you know, at the end turn, of the day. Turn, turn, turn the wheel, turn the wheel, get it, find yeah. your contact. Um, <laughs> and, um, and so that really helps because then you have, you have more people that you can contact and more people that you know, and more people that are watching what you're doing now with social media, right? You know, yeah. you, we post what we do, we show what we do and we demonstrate it all. And so all of these people that I've touched are seeing, have seen the transition that I made from Fox yes. television work to real estate. And it just, you know, took a matter of time before they started to say, okay, we want to work with them. Amazing. I love that. So what would you say some of your biggest um, lessons have been within your career? And I'm sure you've had multiple, but what, what really stands out for you as a big lesson that you took away or grew from? I think I've learned from every job and every, you know, every employer, every boss, if you will, that I've, I've had. Yes. Um, when I was at South Coast Plaza, I learned how to do, South Coast Plaza was very focused on being high end and being the highest quality. So I learned that there's a difference between doing, doing things in a quality manner and things that do the and doing things that take shortcuts or take yes. a discount approach, right? I yeah. also learned at South Coast Plaza how to market to women because when you think about a major retail center, right? Yes, of course. The majority of the buyers are women. We would do fashion shows and flower shows and catalogs with photo shoots and predominantly, you know, women's clothing and things like that. Uh, so I, I learned those things from South Coast Plaza. After South Coast Plaza, I was at UTA, United Talent Agency. And I learned the importance of client representation yes, and, and protecting the client and making the client feel safe at all odds. Yes, absolutely. Right? Yeah. yeah. Which and is then, very important, especially when you're working with such high level people. Super, super important. And then at, um, at Fox, Fox taught me how to sell content and content marketing. And then that's where I really developed my leadership skills i had had one one job before fox at, at a, a digital advertising agency where i i led a team of five mm. uh, i can't think it is but right before fox but then at fox i was suddenly leading a team of 13 account executives so wow i, I had to really kind of make sure to step it up and yeah. do everything i could to be the best at what i did and to be very, you know, helpful and supportive and uh, inspirational to my account executives. Amazing. So you've touched a bit now on leadership, but I want to talk more about that or the lack of leadership um, from both a business and global perspective. So can you share with us what makes your leadership style so different from others within your industry? And if you could give us some examples. And then what do you believe needs to change or shift or bring back real leadership to change the current narrative? I think with leadership, for me, it all starts with empathy. Yes. I think you really have to know and understand those that you're leading. It can't be autocratic. 
no. I think it has to be collaborative. And although I'm the leader, I have to also treat the people that are following me as collaborative colleagues as well. Yes. So we'll set the direction, but I also get feedback as we go along mm. and then we get everybody forward, right? Um, yeah. I think you have to really also lead from a bottom up mentality. When I worked at South Coast Plaza, we got to meet with the Nordstrom family and they taught us a lot about service and whatnot. And um, you're only as strong as your weakest link, right? Absolutely, so, yeah. So you, you have to identify those that need the most help and then you have to you know, drop back and help them to get up to the levels of those that are leading the way. I think just overall, it has to be holistic and not, you know, it has to be holistic in how you work with the people on your, on your team. Um, yes. You know, it can't be too transactional, too numbers oriented. It, it, you know, you have to understand where everybody's coming from, from a mindset and from a heart. Absolutely. View, and then cater to each individually. Yeah, Absolutely. So a big part of your success is obviously understanding your client's needs. I'm sure working with high profile clients also comes with managing difficult requests and egos um, and takes a special kind of leadership and skill, um, as well as much needed discretion and confidentiality. So can you share with us how you manage this and what makes you unique in your approach? And can you give us any examples? I think just as well as my leadership skills with my team, I think when you're working with your clients, it also has to come from a place of empathy. Empathy is yes. very big. And it's not just, it's just not learning about what kind of house they want or what kind of, to buy or what, what price they want to sell their house for. I think you really need to get in the mindset of the client and yes. get to know them really deep, ask lots of questions. You know, what are their objectives? What are their fears? What, you know, what are their short-term, medium-term, and long-term goals? You know, the more you understand about what is really motivating them to buy or sell, then the more you have to provide service to that client and address their wants. I once heard an interesting quote from Danny Meyer. Danny Meyer is the founder of Gramercy Tavern, which is a very popular restaurant in New York City. Uh, he also is the founder of Shake Shack, which... Oh, wow. The, I love Shake Shack. <laughs> you know Shake Shack, right? Yeah. And he has a book out. I forget the title. I think it may be Setting the Table or something like that. I don't know, but you could look it up, uh, Danny Meyer. And he said, one of the first things he teaches his servers and his staff is to learn their A, learn their A, B, C, Ds. And I thought, that's interesting. What is that? Mm. And he said, always be collecting the dots so that you can always be connecting the dots. So it's yeah. the more information they get about like, what do you want? What well, you know, do you like white wine or red wine? Do you want, you know, or do you have any, you know, special uh, dietary needs and things like that? Then you can address them as a server, you know, in a better manner. And I think the same thing goes for anyone in a service or sales business, we have to always be collecting the dots from our clients so that we can always be connecting the dots. So again, the deeper dive we can take with uh, really understanding the client as a human, as a, as a person, and not necessarily as a buyer or seller, I think, I think the better we'll all be. Absolutely. So what would you say some of your biggest career highlights have been? So you probably had multiple, but what would you say stands out for you the most? Going back in time, <laughs> I'd say leaving a six-figure career in commercial real estate to start in the mailroom at United Talent Agency making $350 a week at the age of 34, which is no spring chicken to be making no. $350 <laughs> a week. Most of my peers at the time were probably in the early 20s. So I was about, you know, 10 to 15 years older than the rest of the pack. But yes. uh, that was a big, big event. And uh, in hindsight, I'm glad I did it. I think, uh, I think secondly, it would be interviewing for and landing the job at Fox major, major. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, that's massive. That's not an easy task at all. Huge. And then lastly, and what takes us to where we are now, 
is I would say becoming a top producer in residential luxury real estate within the first five years of being in, in the industry. Amazing. I love that. So I want to turn to, well, obviously the pandemic turned our worlds upside down and inside out. The real estate market went through a roller coaster both during and post pandemic and is now in challenging times due to inflation and recession. So can you share with us what it is that you've had to do to both pivot and sustain a long and successful career? And can you give us any examples? Well, you know, we're working in an environment where there is a uh, you know hyper shortage of, of real estate. There's a yes. hyper shortage of inventory. And, you know, I think I've been in that hyper shortage of inventory for most of the seven years that I've been in, in, in this career. Yes. Um, and this taught, and I represent a lot of buyers. So I, I represent sellers as well, but um, representing buyers in an environment with a shortage of inventory means you're going to be competing against other buyers, right? Yes, so it's, it, it taught me how to really hone my process and try to find a way to work smarter and better, as I said earlier, to mm. make sure that my client wins the competitive bid, the competitive yes. offer. And I have been able to maintain, I've always said 95%, but I think it's somewhere now between 95 and 97%. Uh, win percentage on beating multiple offers. And I have won for my clients multiple offers that were 10 way, which meant like, say you were my client, you, we were competing against nine other buyers. That's a 10 way multiple, right? To yes. 15, to even a 24 way multiple offer. And we weren't even the highest priced bidder. So wow. that's, that's pretty competitive when you can win a 24 way multiple and not be the highest bidder. Also working now in this environment where interest rates have really, you know, risen to, you know, historical highs. Mm. I think that puts buyers in an environment where it's more expensive for them to buy a house. So perhaps they'll still buy the house, but they'll buy less house than they at seven, six percent than they would at three percent, right? Yes, true, true, true. So if more money is going to interest and they're getting maybe a little bit less house, uh, you know, you've got to work with them very closely to give them the, you know, the attention to service and communication and protection uh, in the process because, you know, it's, it's more difficult to get the house these days. Yeah, absolutely. So you personally serve on various boards. So can you share with us more about this and why is this so important to you? I think I started wanting to get involved in giving back when I was in college. I think for extra credit or for credit at school, I made a commitment to serve the Special Olympics for a couple of weeks or something. Um, I worked with a, a program called Joint Educational Project. And I think it, it was at that time that I learned how important it is to give service to those that are in need. Um, and that has carried with me for uh, all, all throughout my career. Currently, I serve on two boards. One is the Gentle Barn. And the Gentle Barn is a farm sanctuary that rescues and rehabilitates farm animals from abuse and slaughter. And then the other board I serve on is called Right Girl. And it's a creative writing and mentoring program that serves uh, underserved teen girls to make them better writers, whether it's, you know, fiction, poetry, songwriting, screenwriting, and also helps them get into uh, good colleges. That's amazing. That's fabulous. So um, that leads me to the next question. So Compass is the largest residential real estate brokerage in the U.S., by transaction volume, was this part of what influenced your decision to join Compass and what was the process to become part of Compass? Um, as I'm sure there are obviously specific criteria to join for, for those who don't know. So can you share with us more about this or the process, what your process was? I think what attracted me the most was uh, Robert Refkin's leadership style. Robert Refkin is the co-founder and CEO of Compass. Yes. Uh, he 
basically built the company, he and his, his partner, Orion, from scratch based on amazing principles and supporting the agent is the number one goal. Yes. And so supporting the agents, building a platform of technology um, and, you know, building a national footprint are things that really attracted me to the company. Before that, I had worked with another brokerage that was only on the East Coast and the West Coast, but really nothing in between. Uh, but when I saw that Compass was everywhere in the U.S., I thought, well, this is more opportunity to help people anywhere and yes. uh, and also serve other agents that need help in L.A. from outside of the California area. Amazing. So I, think, I think that's what got me all of that. And the technology is amazing. Amazing. So what are the three key pieces of advice you would give to others looking to pursue a career in real estate? I'm going to give you three plus one, which is yes. four. <laughs> okay. Because I couldn't just keep it at three. Um, I'd say mindset, modeling, marketing, and networking. Yes. And so okay. what I, when we talk about mindset, I think, you know, People, or I think agents need to do whatever they need to do, to, whether it's, you know, fitness or meditation, uh, you know, reading books and, and watching video clips that are inspiring to really put your head in the right place. Because yes. it can be a business where you get kicked in the gut now and then, right? Where yes. you've got a couple of escrows ready to close or, or, and next thing you know, something happens and, uh, you know, you hear that you just lost an escrow and you're like, you got to be able to just, you know, bounce back pretty yes. quickly. <laughs> take a little time. You can take a little time to take a breather, but not much. And then bounce yeah. back. So mindset is very important. Um, modeling is very important because if you're new in the business, because I, I think it gives you kind of a roadmap or a recipe of how to be a successful agent. So what I would say is, you know, find five agents that that really attract you uh, as to how they do business. Maybe they're luxury agents. Maybe you know, maybe they have a certain type of brand. Maybe they commun communicate differently. Maybe they have podcasts or or, or shows on television that uh, you can really learn about how to carry and conduct yourself and and communicate as well. Um, marketing is obviously very important. You've got to be able to you know, market a property, you know, market a buyer that you're and pitch your buyer that you're trying to get into that, into a property. And uh, you have to be able to market yourself. I mean, building your yourself as an agent, building your brand, very, very important because if, if uh, no one knows you're out there, then you're, uh, you become a secret agent. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then exactly. last but not least, and I think it's really important is networking. Um, Absolutely. I'm, Hundred percent. My sales manager here in Beverly Hills says that I'm a hyper networker, and she's right. Um, I'm constantly connecting with people. I'm constantly going to events, Compass and non uh, Compass. I'm trying to get out and, and see as many people as possible, call as many as people as possible, post on social media to as many platforms as possible, um, and it's very, very important because, you, you know, you have to let them know you're out there. I, I, you know, when I got to UTA, I was interviewed by the LA Times. There was an article called The Low and the Mighty, How Hollywood Assistants Run Hollywood. And when the LA Times reporter called me, she said, I called a number of people out there and your name came up as being the most connected assistant in Hollywood. Wow, that's and amazing. I, so she interviewed me and she asked questions like you're asking now. And one of the things I told her back then is I said, everybody thinks it's who you know that counts, but it's also making sure that they know you. hundred percent. Right? Yeah. I, I always tell people you and people on my team, you got to be out there. You got to put yourself out there. You got to be a little noisy, right? Yes. And making sure that you're always popping up somehow, someplace, somewhere. That's the advice I would give. I mean, Amazing. Well, that leads me to the final question. Oh, the so final. <laughs> what legacy would you like to leave or how would you like to be remembered? And um, if people would like to connect with you, what are the best platforms to do so? If they want to connect with me, they can send a fax to, let me give you the number. <laughs> no, um, oh my, we should bring back the fax. Wouldn't that be a great I know. idea? <laughs> New and improved. Yeah. Um, 
My legacy. Um, I went to the Compass Retreat recently, and all of us were sitting in the audience, and we heard a a presentation by Mel Robbins. You know Mel Robbins? Yeah, I know Mel. I follow um, her. She's great. Hi, Mel. Anyway, um, she gave us a little homework. We had to write down some goals and things like that. And uh, one of the things that I wrote down is I, I said, I want to find a way to become famous for helping people feel good about themselves and their lives on, yes. a, mass, on a mass scale. And, and it just really resonated with me. It's like, I thought, that is just beautiful. And that is so represents like who I am. And, and I do that now in real estate. I help people feel good about themselves and their lives because I help them find their home, yes. right? Or sell their home and get to the next one. And I do that year after year. I, I think the next challenge, the next step would be to continue to do that, but then find a way to do that on a mass scale to make yeah, absolutely. people feel good about themselves and their lives. Amazing. So it's been so wonderful having you uh, today on the podcast. Do you have an Instagram oh. or do people oh, the, link yes, with yes. you on LinkedIn? Or Yes. So I'm the Mark Hernandez. At, on Instagram, and that's the T H E, and then Mark with a C, and then Hernandez. The Mark Hernandez on Instagram. I'm easily uh, searchable on LinkedIn, and I'm approaching thirty thousand connections on LinkedIn. Oh wow, that's incredible! Yeah, I think LinkedIn is an amazing tool because you can network with all the people you've ever worked with, and other and other people that they may know, and it's more it's reputable. It's more reputable. I mean, not to bash any other of social course. media networks, but I mean, a lot of these things are getting spoofed now, right? Yeah. It's like, there's an account on Facebook and I've had accounts on Instagram where they're posing to be me and they're trying to get crypto and all this jazz. Mm. It's ridiculous. I, I think that should be more closely monitored. Monitored, absolutely. My email is mark with a C dot Hernandez at compass.com. Well, thank you so much, Mark. And hopefully we can have you back in the future to see where you are in your real estate journey. And uh, thanks so much for coming today. Karen, thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun and I'll take you up on that offer. We'll do thank it. Thank you.